Welcome back to the move where we are vibing with the book at least 10 minutes at a time. What was the inspiration for that? I don't know. I thought to myself, what if I did it in a different cadence every single time? So the next one is going to be welcome back to the move <laughs> where we're vibing with the book. You should do it in accents. Welcome back to the move. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> welcome back to the move. The next 10 minutes are on Hebrews chapter 11, verses 29 to 40. Thank you for that, Jonathan. That, You're very that, that makes me chortle a little bit. In the move has been very, very good to me. Yeah. I love it, the move. Uh, it was funny. Uh, driving on the way here, uh, Chico is in the other room. He was, you know, he's hanging out. He, he and Heidi are here for, for a little while. He's like, why do you guys do the move? It's like, is it a, a large following or whatever? It's like, I mean, there's people who listen to it, but we just do it because it's, it's good practice to spend time in community. Spending time in the word. Mm -hmm. And it's just that simple. And mm -hmm. all that to say, I would echo the same thing. The, work, the, the move has been good to me as well. Yeah, it's been very, very it's good been to me. Very good. Very good. Very, very good. So where are we at? Verse 29? We're at 29. Uh, it seems like they're introducing multiple characters kind of in rapid succession. It feels as though that Hebrews is starting to wind down the argument. Whereas, you know, sometimes as, as, as a preacher, you make big points, big points, big points. And you're like, all right, look at the clock. I got to go. So boom, 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 boom. You just knock out a bunch of stories all at once. Oh, yeah, yeah. This is this is the, um, you know, when you fireworks show. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's exactly exciting. it. Because here we see uh, all in like one breath, Gideon, Barak, Samson. Who the heck is Barak? Uh, Jephthah, David, what? Samuel. Who, what is, do, is this a story I need to know? First of all, it's Barack. Barack, Barack Obama. And he was the president the of the United States. <laughs> <laughs> Who's this guy? Oh, Barack. That's Judges 4. Okay. Barack is um, the man who goes to Deborah. In Judges, because I think it's the Philistines have been uh, subjugating the people. And Deborah's like, go, the Lord's with you. And he's like, I won't go unless you go with me. So Deborah's like, all right. And she goes, and then this is the story where uh, the water falls, like it rains in the valley and all the chariots of, uh, is it Philistines? I don't know if it's Philistines, but Sisera. Sister, the commander, all his chariots get bogged down. The Israelites wipe oh, him out. Yeah, he yeah, runs yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. And then Jael is like, oh, come in here. I'll give you some warm milk. Give him some warm milk. Peg through the head. Oh, that's the yeah, story. Yeah, that's Barack. That's Judges 4 and then the Song of Deborah and Judges 5. Oh, okay, okay. So Barack was the guy who... No, no. Deborah was the one who yeah, put yeah, the yeah. thing through. No, no. Jael, Jael is the one who puts the so, joint through Sister's head. Deborah is like the... Basically, the judge of Israel. She's the one running things, right? So, so Barack was the coward. Yep. That's a very weird character to name your child after. Yeah, and Barack is the one's like, I won't go unless you go with me. <laughs> Deborah's like, all right, fine, I'll do it. This is not a political statement in any way, shape, or form. It's just an observation about the text. Well, it means blessing. Okay. Well, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> so I wrote down the title for this episode because it's just so good. Barack Obama's in the Bible. <laughs> oh, shoot. There all right, is, so guys. keeping... Yeah, but before we get to 32, we started in 29, right? Uh, Sure. Yes. Crossing the Red Sea. All right. Now, notice, listen. By faith, the people crossed the Red Sea as on dry land. But mm -hmm. the Egyptians, when they attempted to do the same, were drowned. Hmm. Think about that. Okay. Let that sit for a second. Okay. So by faith, they crossed. The walls stay up. Hmm. The Egyptians crossed. No faith. Drown. And that's why the walls fall? Hmm. Lack of faith? That's what you would conclude. Okay. Right? You'd but, be like, but you got this really cheeky grin on your face. I feel like it's the wrong answer. Well, you're it's going the former. Somewhere else. It's the, 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 just the last episode we did. Where's faith localized? Mm, not in the, not, it's not supposed to be in your own self. Yeah. So then what, what was the motive of them going through? If, if I'm driving a chariot, I'm like, oh, those stupid Israelites, they can cross the water. Of course I could as well. Yeah. So there's a presumption there. But mm. what's the motive behind their life? Uh, for the Egyptians? Yeah. Murder and destroying the promises of God. What's the motive behind the life of the uh, Israelites? To preserve the very promise of God. Yeah, for freedom. Yeah. Right? They're walking out for freedom. Hmm. Now notice, who's at their head? Moses. That's right. And Moses has received the word. And Moses is the faithful one who is leading them through by faith. Hmm. So there is an intercessor in their place that is in full agreement with God. Hmm. And because of the agreement with God, all things are possible. Hmm. So even water is able to separate. But who do the Egyptians have? They got Pharaoh. Yeah. And is he in agreement with God? Doesn't seem like it. So then what happens to the water? 
Doesn't work. It goes back yeah. exactly to the way it was before. Why? Mm. Because he's not moving through faith. Mm. He's moving through power and he's moving, well, corrupted power. Sure. He's looking to subjugate. Mm-hmm. So there is no agreement. Mm. So nothing. Right? Yeah. So it's just a fascinating little detail. That's interesting because like, if you distill down Christianity to the principles and the things that you got to do, you might try to distill it down to X, Y, Z, steps one, two, and three, because it worked for you. Therefore, I should do the exact same thing because it's going to work for me. Mm -hmm. But if we're to look at this story, it's like, well, these are the things that the Israelites did. So therefore, I should do the same thing if I want to receive a blessing or whatever the case is. Like, well, maybe that just won't work. Maybe because it's not about the things you're doing, but it's about moving by faith. Yeah, it's about moving by faith. And I think this maybe this is one of those reasons where it's like it's so important to have clarity. Like this was actually something that that arose in church multiple times over the last week and just coming back to the truth that God speaks to his people mm-hmm. and the just the importance and the value of moving by the word of God. Mm-hmm. Because when you have clarity on that, it can lead you to do a whole bunch of things mm-hmm. that that might seem contrary to common wisdom mm-hmm. or whatever the case is. And it's maybe in this way that God God's ways are higher than our way, right? It can so, lead you to start a YouTube channel when nobody's starting a YouTube channel and you're about to get married and well, you're supposed to provide. You know, I'm thinking about all those marriage stories that we've been hearing about people like receive that person back, like Eddie J. Oh, like, yeah, that's yeah. a very, like, in the natural, it is what it is. In the natural, that's a really terrible idea. Like, mm-hmm. you should not do that. As a general principle, that's not the status quo that you want to live mm-hmm. by. And yet when God says, don't take it personally, Jayla, mm-hmm. I've changed this guy. Mm-hmm. Accept him back in. Yeah, that's why this line for me is so great. And back to verse 26, he considered the reproach of, the reproach of Christ greater wealth than the treasures of Egypt. Mm-hmm. So the reproach of Christ was better wealth, right? Mm-hmm. And I'm not going to put myself in Jayla's shoes, but as a friend to Eddie, and I was a friend to Eddie most clearly after the fact, right? Mm-hmm. I didn't, I, we were acquaintances before that. We were actually co workers before that, but I thought he was a chump. Um, we became actual friends after the fact. Right? Here's the long story short of this, by the way, because there's very likely people who came through the clickbait of Barack Obama's in the Bible. Oh, sure. Because like, Eddie and Jayla. Yeah, so Eddie's a friend of ours, friend of the ministry, close friend of Love Reality, who was formerly... Was a pammer. Pastor. A pammer. Pammer. Yeah. <laughs> was a pastor, ended up being unfaithful uh-huh. and lost his job, lost uh-huh. all kind of reputation. Uh-huh. And in the middle of that, three days later, the Holy Spirit tells his wife, who was uh-huh. eight months pregnant while the revelation of his unfaithfulness was, was given... Uh-huh. Forgive this guy. Yeah, receive Take him, him back. back. I've changed him. Don't yeah. take it personally. Yeah, several months later after this, in the timeline of the story, uh, I call him up and I'm like, hey, man, I need a worship leader because I knew he was a worship leader. So, you know, acquaintance, former coworker, hey, man, come on over. He's like, ah, I messed up this and that. We talked through gospel. Just get really clear on it. And um, like him, him being a friend, my friend, and him being a friend of the ministry has caused a lot of reproach. Yes. Right. And, and by the way, full story over at the Death Life podcast, like we just did in a 40 seconds, like six hours of content. Yeah, that's right. Because there's there's the infidelity, there's the former pastor, then there are some wild, uh, the story gets wild. Go listen to it if you're interested, because that's not the end. There's more, more, more. Yeah. Right. And so there's a reproach, reproach. there. Right. But the treasure gained. Mm. And I think we can speak to this together. The mm-hmm. treasure gained mm-hmm. by doing ministry together, seeing the miracles mm-hmm. literally that we've seen, the life that has come up and through uh, our friend Eddie's life in particular has been worth way more oh, yeah. than anything I would have gained, we would have gained materially. I, I was talking to Harold about this actually just, just yesterday. Yeah. And he was spending some time with the whiteboard, just writing things down kind of codifying his mission and all the things because he's working through the Digital Missionary Mm -hmm. Academy and all that kind of stuff. And one of the things that he shared on the phone yesterday is like, dude, when I look back on this, like totally worth it. The (laughs) reproach that he has received, which has been a serious amount of reproach. It's like, he's like, not even like, I do it a hundred times over. Yeah. So like the the math just works out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Because when God's in it and he manifests his life, not even the gates of hell. Yeah. You know, can overcome. So what you see here is just this, that verse 32, what more shall I say? Uh, if time would fail me, this is the... Da, 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 He's da, like, da, da, da. Oh, I'm running out of time. Right? Gideon, uh, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, the prophets who through faith conquered kingdoms and forced justice, obtained uh, promises, stopped the mounds of lions, quenched, quenched the power of the... Uh, 
quenched the power of fire, escaped the edge of the sword, were made strong out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to fight. Now, I love that he then transitions. Yeah, because tone changes. Their faith is not just merely, oh, he conquered we win, power, we win, kingdoms, we right? Overcame We're the best. oppression, right? Because, I, I mean, if it ends there, then one might be led to the conclusion that everything in life is always just rainbows. Faith is and just victory. Like, faith is victory in the material. Yes. Right? Yeah. I love verse 35 and transition. Women receive back their dead by resurrection. Awesome. Amen. Yeah, I want that kind of faith. Some were tortured. Oh, dang it. Refusing to accept release hmm. so that they might rise again to a better life. Hmm. That's powerful. Yeah. Others yeah. suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were sto stoned. They were sawn into. Sawn. Hmm. Yeah. Sod, son, is the way this text says. In two, they were killed with the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, afflicted, mistreated, of whom the world was not worthy, wandering about in the deserts and mountains and in dens and in caves of the earth. As those are the prophets, right? Mm. He's, he's speaking a lot about prophets that suffered this. And all of these though commended through their faith, did not receive what was promised. That's so dope. All of these, all together, mm -hmm. the ones that had those great material victor victories and those who suffered, all of them did not receive what was promised since God had, prov had provided something better for us that apart from us, they should not be made perfect. Mm -hmm. So we haven't received it yet. It's still all by faith. Mm -hmm. Right? And it's still all looking for that better country. But now we get to look, we we on the other side of the cross, we get to look through the lens of Jesus, right? Mm. This is where you could put first Peter 1 11, that these men of old, they inquired and looked diligently, diligently searching, yeah. searching at like these things that the spirit of God was revealing to them. And they were literally writing down. So as they're writing down about this faith that is to come, they're still like, man, what does this look like? What is this going to be like? Mm. We, on the other hand, we have the spirit of prophecy. Yeah. Because the testimony of Jesus has been revealed and is alive in us. Mm -hmm. So we are the ones that benefit from seeing what the fullness of this faith can actually look like in a person. Mm -hmm. That person is Jesus because Jesus is faith himself, right? When faith had come, Galatians 3.23. But you and I have not inherited it, even what Jesus has promised. We have by faith, right? As we see through and we, we position our hearts in that. But we have yet to actually see our bodies transform into the new bodies. We have yet to actually walk into the new kingdom, mm. right? And materially, we have yet to walk on the streets of gold. And yet we are waiting to receive that by faith in the same way that those who were commended in the past are also awaiting. Mm. Because it's at the coming of Christ, the revelation of his kingdom in the appearing, the parousia, the resurrection that it will all be received. So even now, even now, us who are alive now and those who are asleep in Jesus, we're all awaiting by faith. Hmm. It makes me think of, I forget exactly the wording of the sent, uh, the phrase, I'm sure that you, you, would, you would pick up on it, but this idea of like the already is, but the not, already yet. not yet. Yeah. yeah, it seems like this is kind of maybe one of those areas that they would derive this principle yeah, from. Yeah, yeah, from this. Because this, this, this. Hebrews 10 seems fairly <laughs> resolute that things are done. Yeah. Uh, and then Hebrews 11, it seems to almost to hold that truth in tension with the other reality that we have not yet received. Yeah, and I, we would say, I would... I would like to say uh, the already, but not fully, hmm. right? Hmm. Because it's not already, not yet. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, that's illogical. <laughs> In some ways, it's a, it's a good phrase, but it violates the first rule of logic, right? It is already, but not fully, mm. because it's already in the person of Jesus. It's already... Like in the one who has been resurrected. And because he has been resurrected, he is our Moses. Mm. And because our Moses moves by faith, so do the rest of the people of Israel. And we are the people of Israel by faith. We mm. have been grafted in us Gentiles. Mm -hmm. So our new better Moses is actually leading us too. And so we, with such a great cloud of witnesses, are moving towards that as well. And we will all get there together. We will mm. all appear at the same time. Mm. So it's already but not fully, right? Mm. The already, not yet, too often just becomes... Um, Nonsense. Already, but not really. Right? Yeah, see, that's the way I've heard it a lot. Yeah, because people want to phrase it as, oh, it's the already, not yet. 
We're free from sin, but not yet, really. Nah, get out of here with that. Don't try to use a homiletical phrase to impose on Scripture to nullify the very word of Scripture. Jesus has something to say about that, and he was pissed off at the Pharisees when they did that. Mercy. Stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm looking into Hebrews chapter 12, which is where we're going to be heading into the next episode. But I'm wondering if maybe it's worthwhile to kind of recount some of the steps that we've gone. Maybe Hebrews 10. What is the big theme? Hebrews 11, now that we just kind of are wrapping up this chapter. And then how is this teeing up to what we're going to see in Hebrews chapter 12? Oh, man, it's so good because in Hebrews chapter 12 is where we're going to get to where this new Moses, Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith, is literally leading us. Hmm. Right? You have not come to Mount Sinai. Hmm. You have come to Zion. Yeah. You have not come to somewhere in the terrestrial realm that just speaks condemnation mm. like the law did when you first received it not because the law was like the problem but because your flesh was the problem mm. that's not where you've come you've come to the festal gathering of the firstborn where great celebration in heaven this is where you're being led to this is uh hebrews 12 24 22 through 24 so this is the trajectory is that we are being led in the same way that the children of israel were led from slavery into the promised land we are being led metaphorically through hebrews to this fullness of this reality that's found in jesus from him being better than the angels him being better than moses him being uh, uh, akin to Melchizedek, right? Where he has no genealogy and that his way is in the sanctuary. If you look at the sanctuary, you see the transition, you see the pieces that this is all a revelation of Jesus and his fullness and what he's bringing. And to those who actually belong to him, that have him as their high priest, they have been delivered from the power, the penalty, the mentality, sin consciousness, and prison of sin because Jesus came not as one who uh, has to offer sacrifices daily, but as one with an incorruptible life that offered once and for all. And now he's resurrected and he's leading us into this place by faith. So we get to join with this chorus in Hebrews 11 to actually position our hearts and look and be led to the gathering of Jesus with the blood of the lamb, the blood of the firstborn that speaks better than the blood of Abel. Hmm. Hebrews 12, 22 through 24. This is where we're going. Hmm. And this is why then Hebrews concludes, right? Plot twist in Hebrews 13 with uh, uh, talking about to the great shepherd of the sheep, hmm. right? Because mm -hmm. this is the trajectory. It's leading us all the way there. Just for a quick, you know, uh, you look at Hebrews uh 13, 20. Now may the God of peace who brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of of the sheep by the blood of the eternal covenant equip you with every good work that you might do his will working in us that which is pleasing in his sight through jesus to whom be glory forever and ever amen this is the point of hebrews that's where we're going i love it excited <laughs>